Many of us would recognize this as a traditional cherry orchard. But how about this? One long trunk growing sideways with vertical shoots growing straight up. It looks odd, but it just might be the way cherry trees will look in the future. You can see the fruit along the wall. The idea is to develop a pedestrian orchard that you can walk in and try and harvest a lot of it from the ground or from a small platform. And with a closer spacing, of course, you can get more uh, yield, greater yield off the same unit of land. This is an ambrosia block. Jerry Nielsen is a research scientist at the Pacific Agri-Foods Research Center in Summerland. His specialty is soil fertility and plant nutrition, so when it comes to dirt, he is the expert, and he knows the best ways to get crops growing in good soil. What about the systems we work in? Do they produce a lot of carbon dioxide? So this is a trial with, in cooperation with UBC, and this hair dryer here is, uh, it's got a lot of sensors in there to tell what the moisture is doing, but that automatically closes and you're measuring the amount of gas that's coming off that. And we've been keeping track of that. We are measuring the gases, but we're also very interested in how the organic matter improves in the soil. And then there's other people out here looking at the microorganisms in the soil. There's a part that uh, in the long-term health of the soil, you want to sustain your production and results don't happen overnight. Research is ongoing and from starting an experiment to getting that food on your table can take 10 years or more. There's a very interesting study done by the provincial government about what crops we could grow and we're in a very fortunate situation here in the Okanagan. We've got very healthy crops. We're part of the Mediterranean diet with fruits and vegetables so uh, maybe we could supply a lot more of our own production. Water is a valuable resource in our arid climate, and the agricultural community is under increased pressure to do more with less. Here, Jerry shows us an atmometer that regulates irrigation based on the weather. Calculates how much water to apply, and so as a result, you have a continual fluctuation in the amount of water you put on. So on a hot, dry day, the very next day you put a lot more water on than you would on a rainy day. So this is one way of trying to make it more efficient, the application of water. The other thing that we have with these automated systems is that we have a way of applying soluble fertilizer. You can see in here we've mixed up the fertilizer we want in here. We're always looking to, to tweak the system to make it better. The white behind these apples isn't snow. They're white plastic sheets meant to reflect light into the trees. It's another experiment going on here. It's not known at this stage how far we'll have to go in justifying all these things in agriculture. Because I think uh, food is still pretty important production and we can do it better, maybe with lower carbon inputs. Uh, and I would say that's a good thing to do.